Could the Amazons have been a real species? Or is that theory not strong enough to hold up? Science Behind Wonder Woman Wonder Woman is slated to come out in June, and honestly, it looks like a pretty cool movie. Not a lot of superhero movies have delved into the ancient past, and seeing it this time around will be pretty interesting if nothing else. More on subject, I'm sure a lot of you have seen my Aquaman video, which was just about my favorite video to do thus far. For those of you who watched it, this is going to be a very similar concept. We're going to take a look at whether or not Amazons, the race Wonder Woman belongs to, could exist, or even if they simply did exist previously and have since died out. Starting off, we need to find where in history the Amazons are actually mentioned. Although they exist in the world of comic books, their origins lie in, you guessed it, ancient Greece. But our story takes place a little earlier in history than you might expect. The Amazons were first described by the Greek poet Homer in his now famous story The Iliad. The Iliad is an epic, meaning a long story told in a rather poetic fashion. Homer had actually written this epic during the 8th century BC, somewhere between 500 to 400 years before Plato ever mentioned Atlantis. The Amazons are a much older story, meaning that they, if they existed, had their time before the Atlanteans, if they existed, ever sunk below the sea. This could possibly mean that the Amazons were a species that came to fruition before the Atlantean species did, given that both may have existed. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that the Amazons did exist or that the Atlanteans did exist, but I'm kind of falling back on the possibility of both existing, because for the sake of this video, we're going to look at historical evidence and see if they could have existed. Just something to keep in mind. Speaking of that, what species are the Amazons? Think about it, both Amazons and Atlanteans are human-like, and if they were real, they had to derive from something similar to us. Well, the Amazons seem to be different than the Atlanteans, regarding evolution. In my Aquaman video, I described how the Atlanteans could have been a race of humans that evolved separately from all other ones. Amazons, on the other hand, may be very different. Almost exactly seven years ago, on February 17th, 2010, Archaeologists stumbled across a startling find on the island of Crete off the coast of Greece. While exploring the island, they hoped to discover tools left behind by an 11,000 year old seafaring people that they were researching. However, what they found was far more significant. Thomas Strasser, one of the archaeologists at the site, and his team discovered a hand axe preserved in quartz stone. The significance of this discovery, aside from what else they would come to find there, is that the axe was far too old to belong to the seafaring people they were looking for. It was on the island long before they would have ever found it. In fact, the axe resembled ones used in Europe and Africa over 175,000 years ago. That type of axe had thought to have been out of use since then, until this similar one was found on Crete. However, this wasn't the only thing they found on the island. They found a plethora of other tools, including over 30 other hand axes. Upon dating these tools, they found that the youngest of them was from approximately 45,000 years ago, while the oldest was from 130,000 years ago. Crete, the island where all these tools were found, has been separated from the mainland for 5 million years. This has astounded archaeologists, as it is proof that ancient species of humans somehow arrived on Crete with a considerably large settlement much earlier than expected. This is especially interesting because they would have had to cross at least 12 miles of ocean to end up there. That's pretty advanced sea travel. One scientist, Colonel Reynolds of Boston University, even described the find as about as believable as finding an iPod in King Tut's tomb. Clearly, the find is significant. While that's all well and good to say the least, what does it have to do with the existence of the Amazons? Well, if there was an ancient civilization that spent a little time on Crete, they would have had to come from somewhere, right? Well, what I'm suggesting is that an ancient species of humans could have been advanced enough to travel from what is now Greece to the island of Crete. This species could very well have been the basis for Homer's Amazons. But if that's the case, how could there only have been women? You'd need both females and males in a population to carry on species. Well, slow down for a second. We'll get to that in a minute here. For now, we have to identify what species the Amazons would have been, based on the traits described in the Iliad and other stories. This is where the Amazons would have differed a lot from the Atlanteans. 
While I theorize that the Atlanteans could have evolved as a whole other species of humans that remains undiscovered, the Amazons have several candidates for a known species of humans that their identity could lie in. La Faracie is an archaeological site in France where remains of a Neanderthal group and their tools were found. However, these skeletal remains don't just tell us about location. Anthropologists have taken a look at La Faracie 1 and La Faracie 2, only two of the Neanderthals found in La Faracie, and have found some pretty astonishing things. La Faracie 1 is the near-complete skeleton of a Neanderthal male whose skull is the most complete of any discovered Neanderthal thus far. He was found in 1909. The following year, 1910, they discovered La Faracie II. La Faracie II was a woman, and while some of her skeleton was missing, anthropologists were able to find something incredible about what she was like. Peter McAllister is an anthropologist who has written and issued statements about how we, compared to our ancestors, are actually significantly weaker. In fact, he once stated that were Usain Bolt, the fastest man in the world, to go head-to-head -head with an ancient aborigine runner, Usain would likely get the silver medal, leaving the gold for the aborigine. He also spoke about La Faracie and how it shows that ancient humans were much stronger than we are today. In fact, he concluded that, upon examining her skeleton, La Faracie too could likely beat Arnold Schwarzenegger in arm wrestling due to her massive upper arm strength. According to his calculations, La Faracie 2 also carried 10% more muscle than modern European men. Now the thing about this is, the Amazons of ancient Greek myth were often described as boasting a terrific amount of strength, making them the equals to male soldiers on the battlefield. In fact, they were only said to be bested by the Greek heroes Theseus and Heracles, one of whom had godlike abilities. Aside from some of these figures, the Amazons remained undefeated. Another, perhaps more direct piece of evidence, is the Neanderthal fossils found in this Greek cave. As it happens, this cave is near the coast, and looking at it on a map, it is not that far from Crete. The finds dating also suggested that these Neanderthals likely interact with Homo sapiens at some point. If this is true in Homo neanderthalensis, the scientific name for Neanderthals, and Homo sapiens, the scientific name for early us, interacted in ancient Greece, what are the implications for Amazons? Well, look at it like this. There are proteins, usually produced by and passed on through evolution, that actually contribute to a species' longevity. Longevity, in more known terms, is lifespan. If Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens did breed, it's possible that the offspring not only would develop the strength of both species combined, making them formidable opponents, but that these proteins developed in their bodies, adding to their species' longevity. The increased longevity could explain why ancient Greeks believed the Amazons were immortal and never aged. At some point in time, whatever ancient species of humans that spent time on Crete must have crossed the ocean. It's entirely possible that the species advanced in mainland Greece, but it would have been exposed to the future inhabitants we all read about today. This also means that, possibly like the Atlantean species, the new species decided to go into isolation, possibly due to their biological and technological advancement over the other species of the area. This event could explain why this species landed themselves on Crete. The span of time in which these events might have transpired would need to be at least a few thousand years, with the assumption that the evolution taking place happened relatively fast. Wait a minute, how long ago were those tools dated? Thousands of years ago. The pieces of the puzzle are coming together. If Homer first wrote about the Amazons a few hundred years before Plato wrote about Atlantis, it's possible that, if both stories are true, that the origins of the Amazons lie well before the sinking of Atlantis. In my Aquaman video, I estimate the sinking of Atlantis to have taken place about 9428 BC. If the evolution of the Amazons took place before this, it would fill in the thousands of years of evolution needed to produce them. As for Crete, the stories of the Amazons describe them, as a matter of fact, as living on an island called Themyscira. Is it possible that Crete and Themyscira are one and the same? Totally. In fact, although I haven't been able to confirm it, I've heard several sources say that Crete was once called Themyscira in ancient Greece. So what is the conclusion here? Based on possible historical accounts, fossils, and biological information, it is possible that a race of advanced, strong humans existed on Crete, and were known to the nearby ancient Greeks during their time. The Greeks could have seen this species, and interpreted them, since they were vastly different and possibly more biologically advanced, as godlike. But wait, if that's the case, where are they now? What happened to the Amazons? Sadly, if the Amazons did exist, and were accurate to the descriptions in the myths, it is likely that they died out shortly before or during the time of Homer himself. One key feature has been ignored in our analysis of the Amazons. Why and how were they all women? For a species to continue, there would need to be both a male and female population. This much is obvious, but whether or not that species thrives to the modern day is decided by numbers. The group that might have left for Crete could have been relatively small, and since no one had knowledge of how a species must continue in numbers, they had no idea that they had just doomed themselves to extinction. The rest of the population could have breed with Homo sapiens and become modern people. 
but if the group didn't have enough numbers, it's possible that, come the time of Homer, they were endangered and on their last legs. The last generation of the species could have been all female, with all the males finally dying the previous generation. If this is true, it would explain why Homer described them as a race of only women. He could have been describing the very last generation of this species of human. Even with their longevity, the real Amazons might not have been long for this world. In conclusion, there is fossil, historical, and biological evidence to support the idea of Amazons being based on real evolutionary events and species. In fact, I thought just for the fun of it, I'd give that species a scientific identity. I like the idea of calling them Mulier Fortis, which means strong woman in Latin. As a little tidbit, I've also given the name to the species that Atlanteans could have belonged to. You can find that in my new opening, if you look carefully. For now, we have a pretty good idea as to what the full history of the Amazonian species would have been, if they were real. It gives a whole new perspective to the Wonder Woman mythos, I think, and while the real Amazons might not have had all the powers Wonder Woman possesses, I think it's still pretty interesting to think that, somewhere in history, we might have had incredible ancestors. Ancestors who, despite being practically prehistoric, are still wrote about and are still the heroes of our time long after theirs.